The first time you launch a new Monster Hunter game, the day it comes out, or somewhere near it, it always feels satisfyingly familiar. It's very nostalgic, and it's always reminiscent of going back home for the holidays. It gives you that warm and comforting feeling in a place that you recognize. There's tiny little differences everywhere. This is precisely why Monster Hunter fans spend the first hour or more in their new hub town just poking around, basking in all the tiny details and new settings while taking an inventory of all the things that your parents have moved around since the last time you were home. This is a first impressions review. Monster Hunter Rise feels like coming home for the holidays. My name is Wyatt Fawcett, and this is the first bite. With the release of Monster Hunter Rise on Nintendo's flagship dynamic, portable, and home console hybrid, it was more important than ever to reach the freshly minted version of Monster Hunter's comfort and nostalgia. A few years back, late 2017 to be exact, the Monster Hunter formula was upgraded in a gigantic way thanks to the launch of Monster Hunter World. This brought hunters out of a flat, sometimes 2D environment and gave you control over the camera and all aspects of the game and really blossomed into this beautiful 3D world that we know and love today. It revolutionized the experience in many ways and played a major part in grabbing the attention of many non-Monster Hunter fans. Fast forward to 2021, the abundance of players that put hundreds of hours into the world are now ready for the next adventure which puts a ton of pressure on Monster Hunter Rise. They have to continue the momentum building into the future while minimizing things a bit in order to make it playable on the handheld console. For the most part, Monster Hunter Rise does everything it has to in order to feel like the video game series isn't taking a step backwards from its dominant showing on home consoles last generation. While I adored the plaza and hub of world, there's something small town, Japanese village flavored with the new hub and rise, and it's very much my new happy place. Upon re-entry, whether I'm booting it up, or I'm returning from a hunt or a mission, everything about Kimura Village warms my belly like a steaming bowl of ramen. Keeping the three-dimensional world from the previous entry, Kimura Village feels more alive than prior entries to world. Looking around the village to observe every small detail is engrossing, it's vibrant, it's welcoming. Capcom has come a long way in making its system streamlined and new user friendly, which perfectly introduces you to all the new faces and places around the new hub town. As for actual onboarding of new players, there's nothing too complicated. And with the game's built-in rollout of new features, as your hunter gets their bearings, so do you. The game isn't throwing a mountain of systems and features at you, making it more difficult to comprehend things if you're less familiar with the Monster Hunter formula. Rise might actually be the most friendly game in the franchise's history. The ease of new player adaptation being fantastic isn't to say that there isn't enough in the game for the seasoned hunter. From Dango optimization to a handful of side quests you can always have going at the same time, and the magnified difficulty of hunting in a full online party rises as deep as any other mainline entry into the franchise, and even more balanced and intricate than some. As veteran hunters know, eating is a large part of the hunt. The preparation stage is part of the reason why we get so inundated and 
like playing with the complicated features in a Monster Hunter game. In Rise, there's a new Dango formula for hunters to min-max and tailor to their specific needs. A full Dango meal is three dumplings on a stick, and players can choose each part of that three-part meal. Each particular Dango can grant different buffs, from potentially taking less damage, to resistances to specific elements if you're fighting a certain monster, and even the chance to gain extra carving opportunities once your hunt is complete. It's a fun system and it feels particularly poignant when attempting difficult hunts, picking the right combo of buffs and using dango tickets to ensure the rolls are 100%. It's a wonderful experience each and every time. Eating is as fun as ever in Rise, as the song and dance number that accompanies the cooking scenes follows Rise's new pattern of joyful rhymes and poetic hooks. Taking a look at the actual monster hunting, Rise comes in swinging light, but packs a pretty heavy punch. At launch, the newest Hunter game has a total of 61 monsters, 35 large and 26 small. This may seem like a diminished number in comparison to previous titles, but it's important to remember that Capcom has done a phenomenal job of supporting these titles in years past, and there's an expectation now that Rise will receive numerous updates in the coming years. Of the 61 beasts to hunt or capture, 47 are returning members of the infamous lineup in Monster Hunter history. But with it, Rise brings 14 brand new monsters to the party. So far, through my early journeys to rank up my hunter, I've had some pretty memorable run-ins with the new lineup of monsters. For better and for worse. Monsters like Bishaten's wily movement with unique attacks and some dancing movements from the Aknalsum are some of the best new additions, while creepy and returning beasts like the Kezu remains one of the grossest and most uncomfortable fights in Monster Hunter history. And I hate it. No thank you, Capcom. For all of the good that Monster Hunter Rise does to continue this new pedigree of intricate and immersive hunting, there are some notable crumbs left on the kitchen floor that many Monster Hunter world players will miss. The most notable downscale in Rise is the incredibly impactful stalking and sneaking abilities introduced in World. There was something special about using that ghillie suit to disengage from a monster, only to sneak through the bushes either avoiding or approaching re-engagement. It made the hunt feel more like a hunt. Grossly, it attributed to the large portion of making the player feel like a tiny portion of a monstrous world. In the same breath, system limitations, which I presume are the reason, have made for a less flourishing floor around the maps. However sparse the bushes and harvesting spots in Monster Hunter Rise may be in comparison to World, the new wirebug functionality has opened up the maps horizontally, which almost makes up for it. What the maps in Monster Hunter Rise lack in density, they make up for in vertical exploration, and it's this change of scenery that makes it almost unnoticeable that things have been scaled back when it comes to the lush ground environments. Despite the steps backwards, I'm unsure that I've ever felt the stunning awe that washed over me through adventuring and exploring the new maps in Monster Hunter Rise. Through study and exposure, the world feels more immersive, in majority due to the player's accessibility and movement, and nearly every corner of the multi-layer maps are traversable, and it works this magic trick on your brain in terms of truly feeling like you're there. In addition to new movement provided by Zippy Wirebugs, the other monumentally unforgettable new mechanic in Rise is the addition of Palamutes. You've had cat partners in the past, and yes, us weebs and Monster Hunter fans love cats, but Capcom finally gave us pups. These goodest doggos not only provide new functionality in combat, but they also act as mounts for hunters, allowing you to traverse these beautifully redesigned monster hunter maps in an entirely new way. Dog buddies are the future, and there's no going back now. Quite possibly the most significant positive aspect to Rise is the potential. We've just spent the last half decade watching Capcom purposefully update the content for World. And if they play their cards right, 
hunters will be inundated with rise for years to come. At this stage in the Monster Hunter franchise, we may have to assume that the team at Capcom might alternate between handheld titles and console titles. The success of World has shown them that they belong on those consoles and PCs. Though, there is a vibrant possibility that the future plans for the series will see a Nintendo release followed by ports to PC or even consoles. In an interview with Fanbyte back in February of this year, series producer Ryuzo Tsushimoto and director Yasunori Ichinos mentioned that the PC port of Monster Hunter Rise is coming, that they are making it. It won't arrive until early 2022, though. We saw a trend similar with World, in which the console game release separated PC launches by more than half a calendar year. If the roadmap continues to include early launches on Nintendo's flagship system, followed by integral ports to other platforms, this may prove to be the recipe that will continue to grow the Monster Hunter brand to monstrous size. If you're a fan of intricate combat, purposeful preparation, difficult to master combat, ever-growing threats, and the practice of min-maxing everything about your gear, loadout, and weaponry, then at its core, Monster Hunter Rise is the game you should be playing. Add in the fact that you can do all this with your friends or strangers, and that there's potentially no end to the gameplay. You should be playing Monster Hunter Rise. Just remember to take your time. And soak in the scenery. And don't forget to pet your dog. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you'll join me next time on First Bite. As this is our inaugural episode. I would appreciate all the feedback and support that we can get. If you have the time, we would love it if you would follow us and subscribe on your favorite podcast service provider. Leave a comment or reach out to us on social media. Say hello. Until next time.